This is the type of people we are, sahih. Will Allah uplift from us the humiliation that we're in? Are we, are we today as we are as Muslims, are we humiliated? Wherever we are, na'am wallah we are. Will Allah uplift it from us? Will that humiliation be uplifted from us by screaming and shouting? Will that humiliation be uplifted from us going to Trafalgar Square, demonstrating and taking billboards? Will that uplift a humiliation from us? Will it? And then we go home and say, I did good for the deen. Will that uplift it from us? La wallahi won't. It wallahi didn't for the pious predecessors and wallahi won't, won't do it for us. Hatta tarji'u ila deenukum. Go back to your religion. Tarju najata wa lam tasluk masalikaha inna safinata la tajri ala liyabs. A person wants to say to you, he has a boat, and he wants to tell you that he wants to take a shortcut on his boat. He's got, he's got a boat. So he says, I want to go down there, it's close. So he pulls his boat on top of the shore. What well, the boat does not go on the shore, the boat goes on the sea. You have to take the road for it, there's no other way for it. Success is only one way. Don't make your own roads to success, there isn't. It's only one way. In order to obtain it, we've been told. Until you come back to your religion. We will not leave this humiliation. Have we tried demonstration? Did it work for us? It hasn't worked for us. One. Have we tried shouting and screaming and crying? Have we tried to speak to all politicians? Have we tried all of this? Have we tried to do partition, partitions and we wrote it and we signed it? Has we, have we done all of that? Yaqom, answer the question. Have we done all of this? Has it worked for us? And wallahi won't work. And the reason I say wallahi won't work is my prophet who I trust in everything who came to me the Prophet sallallahu said, "Ma ba'ath Allah nabiya." Allah did not send a, send a prophet. Illa kana alayhi haq, illa kana alayhi, except it was upon that prophet an yadulla ummatahu ala khairi ma yalamu Allah. It was upon that prophet to convey to his people the good that he knows. And there did not come a prophet unless he was ordered to tell his people the harm that could come to them and how to stay away from that harm. And my prophet did that. Abu Dhar al Ghifari radiyallahu taala anhu he said. لقد توفى رسول الله. Our messenger Muhammad died. وما ط وما وما من طائر. And there was not a bird that flapped its wing in the sky. إلا أخبر لنا منه علما. Except he told us a knowledge regarding it. Everything our religion was told. Salman al Farisi, a man came to him. He said, أخبركم نبيكم كل شيء. Did your prophet tell you everything? He said, Yes, he did. He said, Even al khira. بمعنى how to do our call of nature. The prophet that told us how to do call of nature. That we don't face the Qibla when we do our call of nature And that we do not turn our backs towards the Qibla And that we do not use less than three stones And that would he leave, would he tell us that And then not come and tell us about how we can stay away from destruction and harm La wallahi, it was impossible And our messenger told us The Prophet sallallahu told us That we will have a humiliation And what will make us, what will take us out of that humiliation coming back to that religion. Every person, don't point your finger at anyone. Wallahi, don't. Everyone has a fair share in this matter. You go home and play your part in making sure that your household, the wife that you leave behind in the house, the children that you leave behind, yourself, Islam is established in your household, first of all. And if everyone does that responsibility, takes it for us, walillah, alhamdu, minna, the next Muslim ruler will come from one of those houses and inshallah khair will come. And khair will, will come. Abu Sulaiman al-Darani, from the Aimmat al-Tabi'in, from the Aimmat al-Salaf al-Salih, he said, Man safa sufiya lah. Anyone who purifies his situation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change his condition for him. Allahu Akbar. Wa man kaddara kuddira alayhi. And anyone who taints his matter, he taints his, he taints his actions. He doesn't come with what he should do. He stays away from the... Uh, the orders of Allah and he falls into the prohibitions except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will destroy him وَمَنْ أَحْسَنَ فِي لَيْلِهِ anyone who works hard at his night meaning when the people are sleeping at night he stands up and he begs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all these people today that seem to be saddened about the reality of the Muslims how much really of them stand at night for the sake of Allah and make dua for those people because we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the messenger told us, Inna Allah yanzilu fi thuluth al akhir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends. And then Allah, what does he say to his servant? Who is going to ask me for that which he wants? And I will give it to him. 
وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعان Allah is the one that accepts the dua of his caller. So who really stands up and asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at this time? Who perfects his night? Sulaiman al-Darani said, who is the person who perfects his night except what happens? Kufi'a fi naharihi. Except the daytime, Allah will protect his daytime for him. Allah will take care of your affairs for you. Also, what did he say? وَمَنْ أَحْسَنَ fi nahari, And anyone who works hard for his daytime, he makes sure that the daytime, whatever he is doing, he makes sure he fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the food that goes into his mouth. Any person who eats haram, the hellfire has a right on you the day of judgment. Come, how, how much of us say, you know, by all means necessary, I have to do this job. What can I do? You know, I'm forced into it. It's not my choice. But when it comes to your, your, your affairs of the hereafter, oh, I can't do it. You're slow. But when it comes to the disobedience of Allah, you're the first to fall into it. Or ya qawm, we need to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to fear Allah. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, رَجُلُ يُطِيلُ السَّفَرْ أَشْعَثَ أَغْبَرْ يَمُدُّ يَدَيْهِ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ يَا رَبْ يَا رَبْ وَمَطْعَمُهُ حَرَابْ وَمَلْبَسُهُ حَرَابْ وَغُضِيَ بِالْحَرَابْ فَإِنَّا يُسْتَجَابُ لَهُ The Prophet told us a man who was a traveler. This is why we even, even if we did stand that night and we did make dua, Allah, Allah, a lot of us won't accept our duas. Why? Because all day we're eating haram. And all night we are doing, we're doing sinful acts. And so what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do to our affairs? Allah had left us, he, he's forsaken us, abandoned us, and he said, control your own affairs. Because you don't ask me for anything. You don't worship me as your creator. This man, the Prophet told us, was a traveler. What are from the people whose du'as are accepted? Are who? The traveler. Three people's du'as are never rejected. They're accepted. From them is the what? The traveler. He lifted his hands up in the air. Not only did he lift his hands up, the Prophet said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ حَيِّيٌّ كَرِيمٌ إِذَا رَفَعَ إِلَيْهِنْ عَبْدٌ يَدَهُ لَمْ يَدْرُدْهُمَا صِفْرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what? Hayi. Allah is shy. Kareem. Allah is generous. No servant lifts his hands up in the air except Allah gives him what? He asks for. This man, he did it. So he was a traveler and he also lifted his hands up. Listen to me, brothers. The third thing, what did he do? He said, Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb. If you go to Surah Ali Imran, when the people said, Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb, what did Allah say after that? The last safha in Surah Ali Imran, the last page. Fastajabna. We accepted their dua. Because they used so much, Ya Rabb. Ya Rabb is one of the ways to Allah to accept your dua. Because there is in it what? Tulihu fi duaik. You are excessive. You're begging Allah. Allah will accept it from you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He came with those three. Allah didn't accept his dua. Why? His condition could not be changed for him because his actions were not, were not accordingly. So when he said, Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb, he cried to his Lord as a traveler. He needs him. He's in the desert. He's in time of trouble. He cried back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did Allah, what did the Prophet say? Mat'amu haram. His food is haram. Wa malbasuhu haram. The clothes that he's probably wearing is haram. He got it from a haram income. See? And he was raised upon haram. How is his dua going to be accepted? How is dua going to be accepted? Abdullah ibn Mubarak, I was reading the seer Alam al by Imam al Dhahabi, rahimahullah. He mentions Abdullah ibn Mubarak. He was from the A'immah al Nuqad. He was from the great scholars of hadith. Abdullah ibn Mubarak, his father Mubarak, used to be a slave for a man. He used to be a slave. For a man, the man said to him one day, go into the garden that we, I own and said, go get me the most juiciest, the most tastiest apple that I have in my garden. Go get it for me. And Abdullah ibn Mubarak's father went and he got a couple of apples and he brought it to the man. He said, here it is. He took a bite and he said, I asked you the most tasty, the most nicest apple of the, in the garden. He said, wallahi, I've never eaten any of your products in this garden ever. I don't know what they taste like. I just took the chance and I brought which, which I thought could be nice. He gave birth to who? Abdullah ibn Mubarak. You see, the halal person whose income is halal, whose life is halal, whose situation is good, Allah will bring good out of him. This is the problem that we have. We're not looking into the matters as it should be.